Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about the shortcut to factorising quadratic trinomials. So up to this point we've been using the guide number method and this is going to be a shortcut that can be used in some cases instead of that guide number method which can be quite long. However, it won't work in all cases so you still need to know how to do that. This shortcut will only work when the leading coefficient is 1. And that leading coefficient, that's the coefficient that's in front of the x squared. So when we just have x squared. If I had 2x squared or 3x squared, this method won't work. So let's do an example that we would have already seen. And we're going to look at how this new shortcut would work. So for guide number, what we would usually do here is we would say that our guide number is plus 20. And we want the factors which add to give us nine now this bit doesn't change this bit's still here so for this the bit you hate unfortunately i can't help out with that so we're going to work with either 20 and one and that doesn't work or 10 and two that doesn't work uh, five and four and that does work now usually we would go and start rewriting it but actually once you've found the right pair of factors, all you need to do is simply open two brackets. This is x squared, so x is going to go at the front of each of them. And it's plus 5 by plus 4, and that's your answer. So actually, the factors you find with this guide number piece, can just simply give you the final answer now like i said this only works because this has a one in front of it if that didn't have a one in front of it that wouldn't work let's do a few more examples so example two we have x squared minus 3x plus 2 so you might not even need to go to the guide number piece it's up to you you can open your two brackets uh we've x squared so we'll put x into both now i'm looking at the factors of plus 2 and I want them to add to minus 3. Now, sometimes you can get confused about multiplying, adding. So if you still prefer, you can pull out that as a guide number. It's plus 2. And I want the factors that give me minus 3. So it's going to be minus 2 by minus 1. So into my bracket, I put minus 2 and minus 1. This might help when we're doing the solving. And you might be finding that factorization piece is very long. This just makes it a little bit easier. It gets rid of the grouping piece. So example three, we have x squared minus 3x minus 10. Again, we're going to go to our two brackets. We're going to put x in both. The guide number here is minus 10, so different signs. So 10 and 1, 5 and 2. So we're going to have a minus 5 by plus 2. So we put minus 5 in one bracket and a plus 2 in another. Example 4, we have minus 12 and we want to add it to plus 4. So we have x and x in the bracket. So if you want to try this out the guide number, we're looking at the factors of minus 12. So the signs are going to be different. That basically the numbers that will subtract give us 4. So we're going to have 6 and 2. So it's going to end up being plus 6 and minus 2. But like I said, if you prefer to put out guide number here, minus 12, minus our different signs. So we're going to have a plus 6 by minus 2. That's absolutely perfect. So final example, example 5. And straight away, you might be looking at this gun, but I can't use the shortcut here uh, because 2, it's not 1. <laughs> so it has to have a leading coefficient of 1 in order to use this shortcut. However, this is going to be an incentive to look at other ways to factorise. Because if you look, actually, highest common factor works here first. So a 2 is common. And when you pull out that 2, you're left with x squared plus 3x plus 2. And now, in the bracket, I can use the shortcut. So instead of doing all the long window way that we had last week, I can open my two brackets. And actually, this one's really nice because it's plus 2. And I want to add 3. So 2 is prime. It's only 2 and 1. That's all it can be. So our final answer is 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 1. 
So if you can pull out that leading coefficient using highest common factor, great. If not, you're back to your traditional guide number where you where you um, split the middle term into two pieces and work through it. If you try some of these yourselves, here is a whole page of work for you to practice this shortcut. If you are doing anything and want to send it through to me for correction, do. If you do not want to do this, if you do not like the shortcut, if you want to keep going the way you're going, that is absolutely perfect.